Hello my dear learners, I welcome you all wholeheartedly to our channel which is Best Notes Tutorials. In this video, I am going to explain all the details about Charles Lamb. Charles Lamb was extremely important poet. He was from Britain and in English literature, we cannot think of having our examination preparation up to the mark without discussing him. So let's begin with the details about him and I'm going to tell you all that it is going to be in parts because we will be doing minute explanation therefore it will require several videos. Okay, so I want you all to be patient and please be attentive in the classroom so that it is going to be beneficial for your examination as well okay so let's start with today's class i'll be covering about the author then important works which is important from examination point of view friends charles lamb was born on 10th february 1775 and he died on 27th december 1834 he was an English essayist, poet and antiquarian. Antiquarian means the people who collect antique items. It could be anything like uh, old uh, uh, items which they find during excavation, during research work. Okay. Or it could be any book. Okay. So he was one of those best known for his essays charles lamb had written numerous essays but the most popular was essay of alia and this was for children at very early age he started writing okay charles lamb started writing so we find he has inclination towards child's stories okay next we have Tales from Shakespeare, then co-authored with his sister. Now see, whatever books he has written during his childhood, it was authored with Mary Lamb. Mary Lamb was also another poet, but there was some problem. Okay, what was problem with her? I'll let you know as we move ahead. Okay, T uh, right now let us know that she was born on 1764 and she died on 1800. 47 and uh, Mary Lamb she helped her brother in writing poetry in writing essays etc okay so most of the works we find in collaboration between siblings Charles Lamb and Mary Lamb he was born in inner temple okay date I have already mentioned and uh, the place where he was born is Inner Temple, London, England. Now see, Inner Temple is very important area in, in, uh, in London, which is there in England. Because all the professional barristers, they used to enroll themselves here. Because with, if they have to practice outside, then they had to get enrolled in this Inner Temple. If I put it in another words, then it will be Professional Association for barristers and judges okay and in order to practice bar uh, barristership or you can say uh, to be a lawyer they had to be a part of this inner temple therefore it was very famous and he was born here itself why i'll tell you okay he died on 27th december 1834 at the age of 59 and he died at Edmonton, London, England. His other name was Elia. Because of this name Elia, he became famous also because his first essay was titled as Essays of Elia. Okay. He was famous for Essays of Elia, I have already told you. Now let's talk about the relatives of Charles Lamb. 
In relatives, we find Mary Lamb, sister, who was a great poet, and John Lamb, brother. Friends, uh, there might be some confusion regarding his brother's name and his father's name. Both are same. John Lamb is a uh, brother's name of Charles Lamb and his father's name as well, John, John Lamb. Okay. Friends with such literary luminaries as Samuel Taylor Coleridge or S.T. Coleridge, Robert Southey, William Wordsworth and William Hazlitt, Lamb was at the center of a major literary circle in England. See, when you notice these poets' names, then you find that all these writers belong to Romantic period. Okay, and Charles Lamb was also, um, you know, a poet who belonged to Romantic period, later Romantic period. These are from earlier Romantic period and Charles Lamb was from later Romantic period. Okay, now see, all these writers were very renowned. Luminaries means renowned personalities. We have already read about S.T. Coleridge uh, in his poetry, Ozymandias. He talks about the past glory of uh, kings, queens, which get ruined after some time, right? But what happens? The deeds that the king has done will remain, okay? So, in that uh, poetry of S.T. Coleridge, that is Ozymandias, we find the glory of a person, a king or any human being will remain if they are doing something positive, something uh, contributive to the society. Otherwise, they will be demolished, their name will be wiped out from the history. Okay? Then we have Robert Southey, William Wordsworth. Uh, let's not talk about uh, these poets right now because we have to focus on Charles Lamb. Okay. So let's talk about him a little bit more. Let's see the next point. He has been referred to by E. V. Lucas, his principal biographer, as the most lovable figure in English literature. E. V. Lucas has written or biography of Charles Lamb, okay, and he had said the most lovable figure in English literature. So, see, biographers, usually what do they do? They try to understand the inner core of any poet. They write on different topics, that's fine, but how do they feel while writing? What inspired them to write? All these points will be discussed through a biographer and uh, after understanding through interaction with Charles Lamb he came to a conclusion that he was a lovable literary figure he is not using word great okay great will make a kind of difference between a common people common reader and a great writer okay he is writing lovable because it is to make connection between the readers and the writer. Writer is Charles Lamb and the reader are common people like us. Okay, so unless and until there is bonding between a reader and the writer, we won't be able to understand the poet much. So here, the same was done by the bridging uh, of the gap is done by E. V. Lucas. Okay. Let's move to the next point. Charles Lamb was born in London the son of Elizabeth Field and John Lamb. I told you John Lamb is also the brother's name of Charles Lamb. Okay. Now, why did they keep both father's and son's name same? We have no clue of that. We have to just mug it up and then move ahead. Here we find Charles Lamb was the youngest child with a sister 11 years older named Mary and an even older brother named John. There were four others who did not survive infancy. Now see children, sorry, now see learners. Here, infancy is the period before childhood, after the birth, till five years of age, five to six years of age, we call that period as infancy. 
and a child needs utter care at that time proper nutrition proper environment proper medical care and at that time when a child's lamb used to write his poetry okay and uh, during his era it was not proper medication that was provided there was no nutritious food there was no health security that is why four brothers did not survive okay so here we can see only three siblings were there that is charles lamb john lamb and then mary lamb but there is a huge there was a huge problem with mary lamb okay even though she collaborated with charles lamb and uh, published so many works but she was suffering from mental illness okay mental illness and for this she was uh, taking uh, medication as well all right but in this breakdown in this mental breakdown she she killed mother as well she stabbed her mother during mental breakdown now see this was tragedy which had happened in life of charles lamb and he could not say anything to sister because it had happened because of medical illness therefore he did not have any any uh, say on it okay he could not stop it as well let's move ahead his father john lamb was a clerk sorry a lawyer's clerk and spent most of his professional life as the assistant to a barrister named samuel salt who lived in the inner temple in the legal district of london so he was born to john lamb who was a lawyer's clerk and i told you where a lawyer should stay if they want to practice in present uh, world okay then present world you can say so most of his professional life as the assistant to a barrister so his father was a clerk and he spent maximum time being with this man samuel salt therefore they had to live at inner temple now i told you this is the place where a, a, a clerk a barrister a lawyer had to stay if they want to practice they had to get experience from inner temple then only they can go out and take job anywhere okay for that this place is very famous and is still there in london right now it was there in crown office row that charles lamb was born and spent his youth now this inner temple was the place where charles lamb was born and spent his place uh, spent his childhood at place called crown office row okay so usually you must have seen that when somebody works in a school then uh, if it is a residential school then everything happens there only the child uh, get uh, born there and then they grow up and then they get education there in the same way charles lamb was also born and brought up in this inner temple where he could see barristers lawyers judges everywhere okay Lamb created a portrait of his father in his alia on the old benches under the name Lovell Now see he dedicated this book to his father Okay his its name was Alia on the old benches It is because he loved his father a lot and when he lost his father he became very much distressed he did not publish that novel in his own name that is charles lamb but he used pen name that is lovell now what was the reason uh, we can assume okay there is no surety but we can assume that he started writing very early and at that time it was a uh, 
trend to hide their names because it they used to judge whether it is written by a female member whether it is it was written by a child then it used to hamper their publication okay because if it is written by female they considered it very much emotional okay women are very much emotional to their text and to their characters all right whereas a child if it is written by a child then obviously there won't be maturity in it so in order to avoid those uh, things maybe child lamb has written in this nickname lobel lamb's older brother was too much his senior to be youthful companion to the boy but his sister mary being born 11 years before him was probably his closest classmate see mary lamb even though she had mental problem she became close to charles lamb and both of them they created a lot of poetries and essays which enriched english literature okay lamb was also cared for by the paternal aunt hetty who seemed to have had a, picu- a particular fondness for him now see uh, friends usually what we see children in family it could be many but there are some which are loved and cared by people and the same had happened with charles lamb as well he was loved by paternal aunt hetty maybe because he was very handsome very cute at that age or it could be because of other reasons as well but the point is that aunt hetty loved charles lamb a number of writings by both charles and mary suggest that the conflict between aunt hetty and her sister in law created a certain degree of tension in lamb in the lamb household as i told you um, mary lamb was suffering from mental illness she used to behave oddly in some time so there used to be clash between charles lamb but that was compensated later on when she used to be okay and in their essay in their poetry we find the conflict between aunt hetty and her sister in law okay which created tension to mr lamb's household okay mary was already there who was suffering from mental illness but apart from mary there were aunt hetty and sister in law as well however charles speaks fondly of her and her presence in the house seemed to have brought a great deal of comfort to him see there are different uh, aspects of a person you cannot say a person is totally bad or totally good okay it is because situation and the places will show our behavior if somebody comes to beat us then we are not going to be silent right we are going to retaliate with them and to our might to our strength we we try to fight with them so at that time if somebody sees that person what happens they will think that the person is very bad which is not in actual scene okay somebody had instigated so we have behaved in that manner but when uh, in the calm and composed time if somebody talks to us then we will behave genuinely right so that is what i want to tell you here that even though sister in law created a lot of problem but at the same time she created comfort to him as well okay some of child's fondest childhood memories were of time spent with mrs field his maternal grandmother who was for many years a servant to the plumer family who owned a large country house called blexwear near wilford hertfordshire now see their family was not much rich sometimes they had to be a caretaker of a huge palace as well but whenever the owner was not there child sorry charles lamb used to go there and spend time with grandmother okay after the death of mrs plumer lamb's grandmother was in sole charge of the large home 
and as William Plumer was often absent, Charles had free reign of the place during his visits. So, after the death of William Plumer, he got opportunity to stay in that place full-fledgedly. A picture of these visits can be glimpsed in the earlier essay, Blixmoor in H. Shire. Now here, H. Shire means Hertfordshire. Okay, now what we need to understand out here is that the essay says a lot about Charles Lamb, his childhood and his adulthood as well. So here, there are some pictures which shows that the essay was essay narrates the childhood of Charles Lamb, which had happened in Blakesmoor. Okay, little is known about Charles' life before he was seven, other than that Mary taught him to read at a very early age, and he read voraciously. Now, see what we need to understand is that we need to understand that whoever whoever reads more they can write more whoever listens more they can speak more so the same can be implemented in the case of charles lamb as well he was a voracious reader voracious means the one who does not stop reading okay they forget food they forget to drink okay when they are reading so such was the nature of charles lamb it is believed that he suffered from small folk smallpox during his early years which forced him into a long period of convalence now see convalence means uh, the recovery period after some illness okay so here the illness that is mentioned here is chickenpox and this convalence is the recovery time as i have told you Okay, so after the recovery time, after the convalence, what happened? Charles Lamb, uh, you know, started getting better and then he started inclined, he, he started inclining towards writing poetry again. After this recovery, after this period of recovery, Lamb began to take lessons from Mrs. Reynolds, a woman who lived in the temple and is believed to have been the former wife of a lawyer. Now see, there was a schoolmaster, schoolmistress rather, okay, she helped Charles Lamb learn a lot. She used to stay there in, in a temple, okay, here, the temple where all the lawyers, judges, barristers used to stay there for their practice, okay. So she was one of the lawyer's wife, and her name was Mrs. Reynolds. Mrs. Reynolds must have been a sympathetic school mistress because Lamb maintained a relationship with her throughout his life and she is known to have attended dinner parties held by Mary and Charles in 1820s. So here we see Mrs. Reynolds had a soft corner for Charles Lamb and Mary Lamb as well. That is why even after being a wife of lawyer, she came and she attended parties and this relationship had, ha you know, it stayed throughout life. E.V. Lucas suggests that sometimes in 1781, Charles left Mrs. Reynolds and began to study at the Academy of William Bird. E.V. Lucas is the biographer of Charles Lamb. Please remember that. In the examination, you will get question on all this. Who was the schoolmistress of Charles Lamb? There you have to say Mrs. Reynolds. Okay, where she used to stay? She used to stay in inner temple. Alright, she was wife of a barrister or lawyer. Then, who was a biographer of Charles Lamb? At that time, you have to say E.V. Lucas. Okay, so uh, let's see this point. As we grow, we have to leave places because our, you know, area of study changes, our place changes, our, uh, you know, dreams and aspirations in life changes. Maybe for that purpose, for studies, he was away from Mrs. Reynolds. But that did not hamper their association in later life also. 
his time with William Byrd did not last long. However, because by October 1782, Lamb was enrolled in Christ's Hospital, a charity boarding school chartered by King Edward VI in 1553. Now we need to understand what is it. It's not a hospital. Don't go by the word hospital here. Okay. Christ's Hospital is a boarding school in Horsham, United Kingdom. Okay. It is a boarding school. Christ Hospital is a boarding school which is there in UK. Okay. If I have to tell you all exact location then it is Horsham, UK. Okay. H-O-R-S-H-A-M. Horsham, UK. So you have to keep all these points. Now see. That particular school was run on charity by King Edward VI and the year 1553. Please remember all these things. Okay, where did Charles Lamb uh, go for further studies? Then you have to say Christ's Hospital Boarding School. You might get confused because its name is hospital but it had boarding school as well. A thorough record of Christ's Hospital is to be found in several essays by Lamb as well as the autobiography of Leigh Hunt and the Biographia Literaria of Samuel Taylor Coleridge with whom Charles developed a friendship that would last for their entire lives. So romantic poets were in association of him and he had a good time with them and Christ's hospital that is boarding school okay don't get confused please here Christ hospital is boarding school of Charles Lamb being there he has written so many essays and in his later life also we get to see so many uh, essays where he has mentioned Christ's Hospital, where he was able to find uh, his uh, friends, S.T. Coleridge, then uh, Leigh Hunt, etc. Then William Shakespeare, in his essay, he talks about many friends. Okay, so what we get to see is that through Charles Lamb's writings, we get to know more about his association with Romantic period poets. Despite the school's brutality, Lamb got along well there due to, in part, perhaps to the fact that his home was not far di distant, thus enabling him, unlike many other boys, to return often to its safety. Now see, his So friends, here we get to see that Charles Lamb somehow survived it is because his house was a little bit away so very often he could not go back to his house for safety which other children did so even though the school had a brutal rule which used to uh, be seen at uh, that time and even you know to some extent even we have experienced the harshness of a school but that is for shaping the career of the children which is lagging right now to be frank right it is believed that children later on they will do uh, well in their life but they will do well in their life which is associated with money but not about behavior not about tolerance and not about you know their nature that should be changed even if they don't have money okay so presently the education system has become so much child focused all right but it does not focus on child's behavior and child's um, tolerant nature. If they will do it, then obviously they can bring, they can mold a person into a strong-willed, determined person, which we are not able to see right now. Friends, rest of the things we will complete in part 2. So till here, I hope it's uh, clear to you all. If you require anything, and if any confusion is there, do let me know. 
Thank you friends. We will meet very soon.